And we are live. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you, sir? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hello, everybody in the chat. Uh, looks like Brody's here already. How's it going? Brody had his uh, birthday yesterday. There you go. There you Happy go, Brody. Birthday, Brody. I believe it's uh, Texas Russell's birthday today, too. So we had two birthdays today or this week. So that's pretty cool. Texas hardcore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so how are you doing, man? How was your week? Pretty good. Uh, Wisconsin is, is doing its best to spring. Uh, did you catch the eclipse? Uh, no. No? I walked in it, and uh, yeah, it was interesting. It was just like I didn't really I didn't really see much of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, how's you, it going, man? Were you in the path of the whole thing? Were you in one of those prime spots where you got 100% or were you adjacent? Um, so in my area, it was, I think it was like, 70 percent oh wow like, okay. when i looked at the when i actually looked at the path or whatever it was like it showed like it was far away from us but then oh. uh you know where i work we have a division in dallas and they sent a uh like a little video from their office and it went dark oh okay yeah like yeah. it was crazy man i was just like wow that's interesting here it, i mean it got cloudy it's almost like if it was just like super cloudy outside i mean it was cloudy but i mean during the time that I was out and about running errands, it wasn't wasn't anything big. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I kept thinking of um, uh, uh, hey, Jeff's here, um, and th and welcome yeah. Wilkie also. Um, uh, I kept thinking of Night of the Comet, of course. You know, everybody was freaking out and uh, the after effects. I kept waiting for people to turn into dust. Um, uh, Bird Box, I believe, was an Eclipse movie. I was trying to think of my my favorite like Eclipse movies. They're all horror. They're all based on horror. Um, was that Maximum? No, Maximum Overdrive was just like like was that Max? Was that one of them? That was a comet. It was a comet, right? Just yeah, Maximum. Over yeah, Maximum Overdrive, in my opinion, is basically just a rip off of Night of the Living Dead, except instead of the people coming to life, the trucks come to or the machines come to life. But otherwise, yeah. it's the same plot. Like they. They even try to get to an island, like in Dawn of the Dead or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, so it, I think Stephen King was probably just whacked out of his mind on Jack Daniels and Powder, and just completely stole Night of the Living Dead. So well, I mean, I'm trying to think. Was he working with Romero before that? With yeah, like, that would have been after Creep Show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought. Jeff. I Jeff, thanks for stopping by, sir. Uh, I got Judas Priest CD yesterday. Awesome, Brody. That's cool, man. That's breaking cool. the law, breaking the law. Um, yeah, who doesn't love Maximum Overdrive? Aside from you know Stephen King. Yeah, I actually, I like I like Maximum Overdrive. I mean, it's it's exactly. such a bizarre movie, but it's funny. I think it's like as far as a character study goes, like every one of the people in that diner is just funny and weird in their own way. Mm -hmm. You know, the hitchhiker girl, the Pat Hingle is the boss, just all of them. They're all memorable yeah. characters. What's yeah, even the, the waitress who goes like nuts and she starts yelling, yeah. we made you. We made you. Yeah, it's a, I don't know. I, that, that's a wild ride. I, I, it makes me sad that Stephen King doesn't like it, but I do. <laughs> it's like what's funny is he doesn't like it, but he he's the one that did it. Yeah, he wrote and directed it. Yeah. You but know? he said he openly admits that was when he was heavily into substance abuse, and he he's like, I barely remember even being on set. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep, ACDC man. Yep, for oh, sure. That, in the ACDC soundtrack and well, score and soundtrack both, but like they do like the psycho stabbing noise, the eek 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 eek, but they do it with the guitar, so it's got that like rock and eighties feel to it. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah, I mean, my buddy used to make fun of that uh, all the time because it's just like for what, just the the sound of it is just I don't know, it's great. Mm -hmm. It's a great movie. I mean, it's you know, it's schlocky, but it's pretty good, man. I still enjoy oh, wait. it. When the guy gets killed by the the pop machine, and you know the what is what is it, the cash machine calls him an asshole, or like, this machine just called me an asshole. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's crazy, man. Because some of the stuff is like, you know, like that machine gun on the turret. Like, mm -hmm. it's not really a it machine. That's like, well, you know, I mean, like, get, how is that gonna work? How are you gonna get killed by a lawnmower unless you take a nap on the ground? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so like, how, logic how can you not out, how can you not outrun it you know what i mean yeah 
Mm-hmm. And uh, so like isn't that the one? Um, it's got the evil ice cream truck. So you hear that driving around. I think that's kind of like a, a inspiration for Twisted Metal. Um, yeah, maybe. At least, at least maybe. that's what I accuse them of. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with them. Uh, professor, professor's here. How's it going, sir? Thank you. For that's my guy. By. Professor's the man. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's funny. I was thinking like, uh, uh, I was thinking to myself, um, you know, like, well, Professor, he had uh, he had posted something about like there was like no Coke anywhere in Mexico, like or in his area. Like, there's yeah, no Coca Cola. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so my thought was like, man, I guess over there they, you know, everybody hoards the Coca Cola, whereas here, or at least in my area, they they hoard the toilet paper and the bottled water. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like priorities, man. They got to have that Coca-Cola. You know what I'm saying? Did you have the uh, the stockpile discussion with anybody regarding the um, eclipse? Like I had a few people ask, like, hey, did you stock up on water and stuff? And I'm like, I'm not really sweating it, bro. I, I live, <laughs> I've lived through hail bop, Y2K, 2012. Like I've, I've lived through the end of the earth many times. So, yeah, I, I, at this point, I'm jaded. <laughs> the, yeah, it's... The real- uh... The real zombie apocalypse would be three days in before I realized it was actually going on. You're going to walk outside <laughs> and be like, what's going on? Yeah, exactly. It's a little more, qu- it's a little more quiet outside. Mm-hmm. Hey, Russell, how's it going? Hey, Russell, Russell, that's my man. How you going, sir? How's it going? Four horsemen, brother. Oh, oh no, man. you're the man, Professor. Yes, you're sir, you are. You are L-man. L-him. El him exactly. What are you saying? Hi, Russell. Russell. Brody, see uh, other Russell, Texas hardcore Russell. Yeah, That's what's what the, te- Texas HXCX nineteen sixty five foot nine? I don't remember what number <laughs> it is. <I'm... laughs> Seriously, but thought Russell. this clips would be one, but to activate superpowers, alas, yeah, yeah, that would have been nice. You know, wake up and I could fly. That would be great. I did kind of have the idea that if I wake up with laser vision or something, I'm going to go and take care of some people I'm frustrated with. Mm-hmm. You've seen Bright Burn, right? So it'll be like that. It'll be a yeah. bright, bright Burn situation. It's a real Bright Burn sitch up in here. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, that's, I guess that's the, did you hear that they, uh, you know, they canceled the second one? Mm, I didn't even know they were making a second one. Yeah, they had been saying for a while, and then they finally, I think it was like last year, they said that they were going to, it was in development. And then I think this past week, James Gunn said, no, it's canceled now. But I guess he doesn't oh. want to ruin or tarnish his DC, you know, whatever. It's te- essentially, it's like evil Batman, if you, or evil Superman, if you really think about it. Yeah. Well, he's probably going to be so busy crafting that whole DC universe, he won't have time to do extra stuff, I would imagine. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so, man. Uh, did you see anything new this week? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I took your advice and watched uh, When Evil Lurks. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, you you called it. That was a fantastic film. Um, in general, I don't watch a lot of uh, uh, non-domestic cinema. I don't know how to... To me, it's called foreign film, but if you live in a country, another country, it's not foreign film. But uh, um, it reminded me of the feelings I had when I saw like certain gems from other countries. Like I, I really loved the devil's backbone. If you ever saw that, um, obviously, uh, uh, um, uh, the vampire one, um, what's it called? But the little kid and they remade it in America. Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, uh, let the right one in, let the right one in. Thank you. I was confusing it with the American version. I was getting my words wrong. Yeah. Let, let the right one in was an amazing one. That was one. I have to kind of be in the mood to to read a movie, you know, like uh, in general, I'd, I'd rather not watch a film with captions because it det- distracts from the visuals of the cinematographer and everything. So uh, but as I was telling you, I watched let, uh, When Evil Lurks and then immediately right after I just hit replay on it and had it back on and was just kind of like looking over at it while it was going on again. It was it was an amazingly well made movie. Um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely good, man. Yeah, I definitely. 
I, I talked about this before with some other films, uh, The Quiet Place in particular. Uh, there's like a, a diet zombie movie they make where like it's basically the same kind of plot as a zombie movie, except they just don't have any zombies in it. And that's what this reminded me of, like the demonic possessions jumping from person to person. And then, you know, I turn and look at you and you're fine. And then I go and do something. I look back and your eyes are screwy like, oh, no. So there's that like spreading plague kind of vibe to it. But it's it's demons instead of zombies. So the, it's it's actually almost like exorcist like it's, it's very creepy and weird. And um, the whole thing with the beginning with the like heavier dude, but he isn't actually mm-hmm. heavy, he's just infected and swelled up with his own fluid. Like, yeah, that was a wild, gross. It it did a good job of balancing like a family melodrama, like learning about him and his son with a you know developmental disorder and all this stuff. But then on the other hand, there's just this evil violence, gross blood. Like, yeah, it really it it tugged at the heartstrings while being uncomfortable. It was really good. Yeah, it was, uh, like I said, I, I, I don't know if I had told you about this before, but it, for me, it was like this movie did something that I hadn't seen in a possession movie before. So, like, the way that the town kind of, I don't want to really give too much away, but the way yeah, the town kind of, yeah, I mean, the town, it's like almost like the town knows about it. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, it's, it's happened before. Because I mean, so many people are like, "Well, this is these are the rules," you know. They're kind of telling we shouldn't do this because of X, Y, Z. Yeah, don't move and, a body and all that. Yeah, yeah. when somebody's possessed, don't move them. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. And oh, man, it was just like it was so good, man. I, that's why it was my number one, you know, horror film last year. It was just it was so it was unexpected for sure. Like, oh and it, it, yeah, they took they took it to somewhere that I didn't I didn't know I didn't think they were going to take it to certain places when i saw it yeah so, i yeah. i they i won't spoil too much but there's a part at the end where a woman is trying to like you know get take care of demonic stuff and there are demons inside children and they're lying to her and they keep saying like if you just do this it'll be fine and then she's like don't listen to them they're liars like just that whole feeling of yeah it's just the not being able to trust people and the long road trip aspect of it. And, you know, the many characters you meet along the way, it's, it's pretty damn wild. I, I recommend it for sure. It's, it's currently on shutter. Mm-hmm. It was a brutal one. And it, again, shot beautifully. It was, it was a good movie. I was I still, I still, man, it's still like it's, it hits you, man, in certain points. And it was really good. Uh, well, two, saw a funny two of the cat people- part. Go ahead. Uh, oh, the uninvited. You've seen the uninvited. Um, uh, there's two people I always trust their opinions on when you and Joe Bob Briggs and both of them said, go see when evil lurks. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to, I, I was on it right away I, between you and Joe Bob. I was like, that's, that's my Siskel and Ebert two thumbs up right there. I'm on it. Well, if you think about it, I'm fi- I'm like batting, I'm like 50, 50 because, you know, I, I kept, you know, singing the praises of Thanksgiving and well, Thanksgiving you know. was a, was a different uh, story because everyone, like even acquaintances, would ask me, like, "Have you seen Thanksgiving yet?" And I'm like, "No, no." And they would just tell me, and I, I that's why I said I felt like I, I was set up to fail on that one. But even then, I, I gave it a you know a, a low seven out of ten. So that's you know that's that's I was pleased. Obviously, it was better than yeah. the average. Um, but I was I was expecting more uh, true horror, like in When Evil Lurks. But this was it was slightly more campy. Thanksgiving was, you know, some of the kills were sort of ridiculous and all that. But yeah, um, I'm for sure going to watch it again around Thanksgiving time. Maybe you and I'll get together and have a watch along of it. We'll discuss the the aspects of it. Um, yeah, for sure. Regarding When Evil Lurks, before we close the chapter on that, uh, the film ends in a way where it. it basically ends but it also feels like there could be another chapter to this story so do you think where evil lurks and you know what evil lurks and you can go through all the dubs you know i don't know <laughs> who, man because who evil he, lurks. <laughs> wherever wherever yeah, so evil lurks. about that thing because the first one it was like when evil lurks and i was like yeah you could because i kept calling it where evil lurks i was getting confused and then i was like i had to verify it was when and then i thought about it i was like oh there's a whole all the five w's are there the who what when where why and all that you know yeah i mean i don't know i mean because uh everybody's singing the praises of his uh of his first film terrified and he hasn't done a sequel to that he did this like this is his follow-up that one's oh, on Shutter, that one's on Shutter All. Also, it's got a really like creepy, creepy scene. Uh, so that one you got to check out too. It's nuts. 
Uh, can we wrap up here? Got to check out the previous. Um, yeah, oh, and, uh, the terrified. It's a freaky. Deep. Okay. There you go. See, the professor knows. Um, <laughs> regarding uh, Russell's question about uh, the uninvited. Uh, I have seen the uninvited and uh, our friend Larry, didn't you watch that with Matt Pugwall? I did. Uh, we saw we saw it on his channel. That was a that was a fun one, man. Clue Gulliger, That's, George Kennedy. I mean, <laughs> well, it made me laugh though because I think that was the first time you guys collaborated, right? So he made sure to watch a movie that had an evil cat in it for the horror cat. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, that was the first mm -hmm. that we did. Uh, just him and I, because I think we did uh, the Nosferatu stream, uh, the charity. Oh, one. okay. And then we did uh, we did uninvited and oh man it's just it's so good like it's and that's available so on, bad but on so good. Channel? That's yeah that's, that's that available. Mm -hmm. Pugwell, you can go watch it. You can go watch it on yeah. Pugwell's channel, and I believe the movie is still on Tubi, if I'm not mistaken. So you can watch it simultaneously. Like yeah, yeah an actual true, true commentary. True commentary. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, terrified is yeah, it's crazy, man. English dub version. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, actually, um, uh, I've been a proponent. I know most people hate dubs because the voices don't line up and it's annoying and stuff. But I find that uh, basically, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was the first one I saw, and since then, most dubs from uh, films are better. I don't know if it's they they just ha do ADR better or if they just find better, but I find most movies in the last like 15, 25 years to be, the dubs are more acceptable. Like Kung Fu movies all suck. We all know that, you know, like, but uh, yeah, I, I actually, I, the, the English version of uh, Let the Right One In is pretty darn good. I have to check it out. I've, I've only seen the dub version on, um, I actually only recently saw that film uh, last year on, uh, it was on Hulu of all places. Oh, okay. But it, it was the, the subtitle version. Yeah. Yeah, Terrified English. Oh, wow. I didn't know it had the English version of that one too. Russell's the YouTube master. If you're looking for a movie you can't find, he knows about it if it's on YouTube. So he... Yeah, man. I'll have, to, I'll have to check that one out for sure. Uh, don't feel bad. <laughs> Everyone loves a new Dune. I can't get into it. So different. <laughs> I I think Professor went through the same arc that we all did, where when you first see Dennis Villanueva, and you're like, oh, he must be like a Spanish director or something, a Latin director. And then later on, you're like, no, it's Denis Villeneuve. And you're like, oh, okay, never mind. A totally different vibe. That's, that's my theory. <laughs> I don't know, man. Sicario's good. His other movies are really good. I don't know, man. I still, the Arrival. I still, I, yeah. The Arrival's a bit slow, but I really enjoyed the overall message and the way it was shot and you know the acting and everything. Was, yeah, I, I enjoy Villeneuve's work. Mm -hmm. uh, Evil Lurks again. Evil Lurks resurrect. <laughs> <laughs> Evil Lurks in space. Yes. See, this. Is, I think there's another trailer coming. I think we got some more trailers. <laughs> Evil lurks, electric boogaloo. Uh, We're just like you've seen evil when evil lurks, evil? and then like you've seen evil lurks again. Like, don't even do trailers for that one. Just do <laughs> cut right to space. Like as if like there's a missing, there's a missing trilogy before that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> don't hate films. Just take them. Yeah, just take them for what they are, man. I mean, unless it's Last Jedi. Or Double Dragon. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you, you can't convince me otherwise on The Last Jedi. I will give the finger to it every time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it just reminded me, I'm still waiting after, yeah? That's it that kills in space. In space, yeah, I know. We need that back. Treo in the spacesuit is needed. He's like, come on, Robert Rodriguez, what are you doing recently? Nothing. Yeah. Let's get it. Yeah. And, no. and Predators 2. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, and and give me another something in the Mexico trilogy, the uh, the Desperado Mariachi th trilogy. I want uh, make it a quad yeah. trilogy. Yeah, you got to get that ASAP before it didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, say, don't say that, Professor. We just lost somebody else this past week. That's kind of controversial, but you know. <laughs> now, now, Danny Trejo and, and OJ are completely different. Larry. Yeah. Take <laughs> no, no, I'm saying somebody that's controversial. We did lose somebody controversial this week, but yeah, we know. did. Um, uh, what's, uh, what we were talking about OJ before the, the stream started, we were going through his filmography at, uh, some of the other things he's done. 
Um, uh, I was recommending to you maybe check out Capricorn One. So for those of you who are maybe interested in anything besides Naked Gun for that uh, despicable murderer. But um, yeah. <laughs> when OJ passed, it was weird feelings. Uh, I think the last time I had that feeling was when they, uh, they got Bin Laden and we saw it on the news. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm never happy when anyone dies, no matter how awful they are. But when OJ passed, I was kind of like, yeah, <laughs> happy trails, bro, peace, whatever. Like, yeah, it wasn't, a, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, like when Peter Falk died, I was like despondent for days. I was like, oh man. Or when Betty White passed, I had to have like a day of just eating ice cream. I was I got the, yeah, the, I got whole, the golden impression. The whole the whole world, you know, was sad for Betty White. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Uh you think when, when Bill Cosby eventually passes, it's gonna be the same type of deal as OJ? People are just gonna be like, Well, whatever, dude. You know. And they're gonna be like, you know, eating a pudding pop. Like <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know. I would like to talk to you, Rudy, <laughs> Theo, Vanessa. That's my limited fake Bill Cosby. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Great. One of my neighbors was telling me that he takes Benadryl to go to sleep at night. Uh, and he was taken off the other night. And I was like, all right, you go Cosby yourself, brother. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> See, when you first started that, I was thinking, you know, he knew that Bill Cosby did Benadryl. Yeah, like, no. When he you started that either. story, I was just like, I don't, he knows Bill Cosby? Is he <laughs> as sick and demented and twisted as we all believe him to be? Tell us. We must know. <laughs> no, no, no. Unfortunately, no. Or fortunately, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Russell Danny Trejo is a great, great, great man, great fan. Hey, I'm a great fan. I think he's a fan of Danny Trejo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm reading yeah. that wrong. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's great, man. It's it's got Yoda syntax. Danny Trejo, I'm a great friend. Watch all the Italian films, spaghetti westerns, real crime, jellos with English dubs. It's much easier, I agree. Subtitles distract me to add too much. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. That's the thing. I, I understand, you know, most folks, uh, especially, you know, us doing watch alongs and things like that. We watch a lot of movies with captions, so I'm not totally averse to them. But the first time I really just want to immerse myself in the film. And if I'm always looking at the bottom reading and then I'm popping up to try to see what I'm missing visually, it's it's hard. So a lot of times was Pan's Labyrinth originally in Spanish or was that in English? Uh, I think it's subtitled also. Yeah, so movies like that, I watch them the first time with the captions, but then I turn the captions off and just watch them again. And, and you know, you know the story so you can absorb the visuals because the visuals go hand in hand with what's going on in the, you know. Yeah, Penn's Labyrinth, that one's a beautiful movie, man. I, don't oh, yeah. I mean, but I mean, it's Del Toro, man. You know, it's, oh, it's kind of hard yeah. for him, you know, He's it's kind of hard for him not to make a beautiful movie. Yeah, that's yeah. that's sort of his wheelhouse. Mr. Harang, welcome legal counsel. That's my guy. Hey, Jay, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Jay's uh, been cranking out a lot of content lately, I saw. He, he loves to do those bad uh, Lifetime movies with the crazy like plots with uh, stalkers and stuff. So I saw he had a couple that were uh, mm -hmm. put out this week. Yeah, he's got some good stuff, man. Uh, uh, let's see. Everybody's saying hi to Jay. Uh, yes, Texas Russell's speed day stream tonight. Watch. Go head over to um, Sean's Sean's channel to watch the Warriors. Sean is back, by the way. Yeah, he's I saw him. He, he was paroled. <laughs> yeah, he got paroled. I went. It was like the beginning of the Blues Brothers. A bunch of us picked him up in a car out front and uh, drove away laughing. Um, now, uh, so Cinephile Sanity is Sean's channel. So uh, that's tonight at 10. I'm, is that 10 Eastern, Russell? So I'm assuming 9 Central for us, probably? Uh, yes. Usually it's uh, around 9 Central for us. Uh, yeah, at least so that's I when I get it. So I'll probably be on uh, the chat checking it out. So you all go by and say happy birthday to Texas Russell, man. He's uh, Yeah, he's a, he's a cool guy. Uh, and heard OJ passing. Uh, yeah, it was, what, yesterday, day before? Something like that? Yeah. And it's and then, weird. I don't think the news wanted to cover it because I, I was the newsbreaker to two or three people and now Bronson as well. Uh, like, um, you know, I would, you know, did you hear about OJ? What happened to OJ? It's like, he died. Oh man, I didn't know. I, I watch a daily morning sports show uh, uh, on YouTube, the Le Dan Lebertard show. 
and they interrupted in the middle of the show to be like, well, OJ passed. And then they all had to have a discussion about like how they, nobody was happy that he would died, but at the same time they were kind of like, not really sad. He's gone either. Like, you know, the conversation <laughs> must've been like 30 seconds. So like, well, onto sports. Mm -hmm. Well, they, a and lot of who cares? Yeah, see, that's the thing. To a certain generation, he was a hero because of his football play. And then when he transitioned into those naked gun movies, a lot of people felt like they knew a new side of him and he was kind of fun and loose. But then when that whole when everything went down with everything, people were like, Maybe there's another side we don't know to this guy. Like, yeah. Um but, Yeah, uh, it's, it's nuts, man. That's great. I recommend a double feature of uh Towering Inferno and uh, Capricorn One. Give those a watch for classic old school OJ uh, in a movie. Hey, Monroe, how's it going, brother? Thanks for stopping by, man. Good to see yeah. you last week, brother. Yeah. Definitely Monroe. a lot of fun. I wish I would have been there with you and the professor and Monroe at the Titty Twister. We survived, man. <laughs> you did. You made a it minimum, out a lot. Yeah, minimum, minimum, uh, what do you call it, casualties. So it was great. He was an outstanding running back and hilarious as Nordberg. See, that's what I like about Jay. He's always got uh, something positive to say. Who? Oh, God. What was the one? Oh, damn it. Somebody asked a question. It was like, what three people would you like to be at a murder mystery party with? And Jay's answer was uh, uh, OJ Simpson, Oscar Pistorius, and, and Alec Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Jay humor. That's one of my favorite Jay cuts. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by, sir. Thank you, Cheetah. Uh, Patrick, nice to see you, brother. I grew up watching tons of martial art movies with horrendous stuff, so I kind of... Eh, I mean, I did, too. I mean, I used to watch a lot of Godzilla movies when I was younger, too, with the bad dubs. So yeah. I I always kind of took it, you know, as a... You know, it was fun. I was fine with it, you know? Yeah. The, the the Saturday afternoon kung fu movie they used to have it in the Chicago area like you could anywhere on Saturday afternoons you could either find some sort of kaiju movie or a kung fu movie and they all just had the worst dubs and that's people who couldn't get over the dub kind of annoyed me like oh how can you even watch this the voices don't line up with the mouth it's like there's a giant radioactive dragon on the screen shut up <laughs> that guy like just jumped over a house and kicked another guy what do you mean this is awesome there's a guy in a big monster rubber suit, and you're arguing over the voices not lining up. Come yeah. on, man. And uh, Professor, hello, my fellow Budget Bala. Mm -hmm. Budget Bala is in the house. My first book, oh, the first book color I got for a gift as a, as a child was to Russell, who am I? <laughs> yeah, that was Bill Cosby's first album, To Russell, Whom I Slept With. Um yeah, it's it's about how him and his brother used to have to share a bed. Um, oh man! But that Bill Cosby himself—that was like a classic cable that was on all my childhood on HBO. Like it seemed like once a week at least. So I've yeah, seen that a million see that times one all the time. Like, yeah, that one would play. I guess because he was like you know safe. <laughs> at yeah, time. at the time, yeah, that's what they thought. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep, Jay agrees. Lifetime movies rock. There you go. Let's take budget ballers, guys. Uh, oh, it's not on Sean's channel? I thought it was on Sean's channel. Oh, it's on Texas' Ross channel? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely put that out there. I'll put that in the community tab or something. I thought it was going to be on Sean since he was back, but okay. Yeah, everybody go to uh, Texas Russell's channel and check it out. Uh, yeah, I love the Warriors. It's one of my... Yeah, come out and play, yay! Mm -hmm. was a cut above the average tailback oh dear lord Man. there's a secret there's a secret joke there there's a secret joke <laughs> could slice through defenses at will oh my god oh man <laughs> he Remember was gold one? man oh wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> oh man you want to <laughs> Remember to smash that like button, like I smashed. <laughs> where this, I was gonna, I made a pact not to take my pants off today, but the it's devolved to the point where it just might have to happen. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, legal counsel's yeah. here, HR is yeah. not here, so I think it's you know free reign, right? Oh, uh, Kara and Oscar will probably show up at some point. <laughs> oh man, uh, 
Uh, even here in the Netherlands, the Cosby Show was big. I remember seeing a few episodes as a kid. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was that was a thing. Like I didn't, I saw I was the same way. Like I saw a few episodes, but I didn't get into it like everybody else did. Like my my cousins, you know, my or my uh, uncles and aunts, they would all watch it. I just I don't know. It was okay, but I like from a, a I don't know sociological standpoint or whatever word you want to use. It was a bit innovative because a lot of times, uh, mainly black cast shows like that, they were like good times or shows mm -hmm. that like where the people were poor. And then even the Jeffersons, it's like, well, they're poor and then they got rich. And isn't it crazy? The black guy gets to hang out with rich white people. But yeah. the comedy show, it just played it like, well, he's a doctor. She's a lawyer. They've, you know, there's nothing weird about it. They're just, you know, average Joe. A normal family. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that part of it. Yeah. I thought that was, that was pretty cool. But the cool, comedy man. was whack. There was like rarely anything funny on there. Was, yeah. <laughs> no, it was just like, well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I liked uh, Theo and, you know, some of that stuff, but. And I was just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I he never got hooked on it either. Yeah. As a, as a oh, <laughs> you guys, oh, you guys are really putting your neck out there today. I mean, we're not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody who's listening back to this, you know, uh, Jay said as a tribute to OJ, slash that like button. <laughs> Original cut of the Warriors or that director's cut of the Warriors with the comic book panels. I don't even. I don't think I've seen that one. I I saw bits and pieces of it. I prefer the original, but the question is, I'd seen the original like thirty times before I ever saw that one with the comic book panels. So it, it, to me, that's the original. You know, the right one. So hmm. um, see, like me, I mean, it's almost like um, it's kind of like Blade Runner. I've only really seen the final cut. So me going back and seeing the theatrical cut now, because mm -hmm. back then I did see the, the theatrical cut when I was a kid, but I, I barely remember that. And yeah. uh, so for the longest time, I've only seen the final cut. So me watching the theatrical cut, I see all the differences. Mm -hmm. You know, I see mm -hmm. everything that's like, oh man, that's new, but not really new. You know what I mean? I'm, so I'm just... in the, the exact same boat. I saw it when I was a kid, the theatrical with the voiceover. And mm -hmm. it, I didn't like it. It was like, this isn't Star Wars. Han Solo should be, you know, where's Chewbacca? This sucks. And then as I got older, the the, the director's cut came out and all these special editions, the you know, the Blu-ray and, and, and DVD versions came out and that cool one that comes in the big silver box and all of the briefcase. Yeah. Um, and that's when he fell in love with Blade Runner, like when I was in my 20s. And I've only, you know, I've never watched the, the dubbed version again or the voiceover version again. Yeah. What, what do you yeah. think, Professor? Give us, tell us in the pan, in the uh, chat. I'm assuming he likes the OG too. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> that a boy, Monroy. That a boy. <laughs> we. This is incredible. <laughs> I was going to make one myself, but I had to stop. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> On and off the field. Killed uh, uh, Hey, Sean. How's it going, brother? How you doing? We were just talking about you, man. Uh, so we were, the Warriors is going to be on Texas Hardcore's channel. Uh, so, yeah. So, Paul Sunday, Sean is here, guys. So, how's it going, Sean? Thanks for stopping by. and glad to see that you're not banned anymore, brother. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, previous guest on the show. What was he? Episode eight. Was that Sean? Uh, was eight. Yeah, it was eight. I think. Yeah, you were the host of that show, so it would have been eight or six. I think eight. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, gee. He killed it when he was at US. <laughs> he won. He won the Heisman. Are you sure he won it? He didn't do something else to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, it's a really good, as long as we're uh, trying to keep this movie based, that OJ Made in America, I think it's called, the documentary, mm -hmm. um, It's that's a very good documentary. They show that, um, it's probably floating around on Netflix or whatever, but I saw it when it was on ESPN, and it's it's like a, I don't know, a, a long one, maybe two, three parts, I don't know, it, it took a minute to watch, but uh, it's that's a very well-made documentary. Uh, I think it's OJ Made in America, I think it's called. Hmm. Did you ever see that... Uh... 
that FX show, the oh, the the one with Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. and yeah, Sarah Paulson plays what's her name, Marsha Clark. Mm, I never saw it, so um, I I've been wanting to check it out. That one, uh, I've heard a lot of good stuff about it though. I heard that oh, Cuba Gooding was really good. It's super made for TV type schlock. Like I, mm. I bet Jay has probably done a, a, a review of it. It's, but it's um, it's it's interesting to see. You know, what I mean, it's it it does a good job breaking down the story for people who aren't familiar. You know, you and I had to live through it and see it on the news every day and wait for the verdict and all that. But folks who weren't familiar with it, that's probably a good uh, Cliff Notes version of it all. Yeah, it's interesting because like it was everywhere. Like even Seinfeld made fun of it. Like. I mean, it was everywhere. You couldn't turn your head without, you know, seeing seeing that or seeing some sort of reference or something to it. Uh, Jeff says, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was more my jam, to be fair. Yeah, I yeah. like Fresh Prince. I like Fresh Prince. I mean, that whole, like, was it Fresh Prince and, like, uh, was it Blossom? It was right after? I'm trying to remember. There was, like, a there was like a lineup that they did of, like, films yeah. or shows. And then, like, I think even, like, Fresh Prince did a crossover with Blossom at one point. I wouldn't uh, be surprised. I, I I barely remember Blossom. I remember that was Joey Lawrence's big break. Whoa. <laughs> and then he made an album. So you can yeah. be you can you can be ditzy and make an album, you know? Talking Warriors are a notification ringtone warriors come out and play. Yeah. That's, man. A, cool, that's a cool ringtone. Plink, I can only plink. imagine like you know, just like out of nowhere, like, oh, oh. <laughs> we were discussing uh, uh, people who would have been a good Freddy on last episode, I think, um, or recasting Freddy. That that guy, the guy, the what's his name? The guy that does the bottles. He would have mm. been a good Freddy. He had a, he had a creepy, weird vibe to him. I can't remember his name. OG, OG cut of the Warriors, by the way. Yeah, these our friends have class. We know that they have good taste. Yeah, there you go. It's mm -hmm. the only way to watch it. Yep. There you go, guys. Sean said so. And Jeff. And we agree. <laughs> Did you know uh, George Jefferson? You know how? Uh, that I don't know. I don't recall really that. He had a chain of dry cleaning stores, I believe. He became like the he became like a huge dry cleaner, and uh, uh, then. Um, one of the episodes, there was a riot, and he had to go back to his original store in Harlem or something. And and there was a it was the riot episode. It kind of blew my mind. I was like, this got heavy real quick. Wow, well, I don't think I saw that one. Uh, the Jeffersons, I believe, was a spinoff of All in the Family. I think there was a couple episodes where George Jefferson, like I don't know if they were neighbors to the bunkers or what, but eventually, yeah, they got their own spinoff show. Wheezy, George and Wheezy. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, hey, uh, everybody saying hello to Sean. The signs were all over the Cosby show. He was a doctor, so he had access. <laughs> mm -hmm. He knows. He knows. Oh, man. Well, our legal <laughs> counsel agrees. Yeah, see? that's Why do you think we keep Jay around? We're plotting murders. <laughs> <laughs> Tossing a... <laughs> Oh my god, dude. <laughs> uh do you want to read that one or do you want me to read that? Happy our friend Eric says, uh, happy Friday, tossing the carton away as my OJ is expired. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Oh man, for, for uh-huh. Exactly. We're all, all we're along. all kind of accessories, if you think about it. I know, right? He was doing it right in front of us, man. Uh, the signs were there all along. Uh, Cruising all the way, yeah. Also, also, oh, yeah, the Rockstar game. Yeah, I remember that. I game. was going to mention that. Yeah, that, that Rockstar game was awesome. Yeah, I was going to uh, – speaking of that, did you ever uh, – I don't know if I had talked to you about it. I know if if I would have been in the chat on on uh, when you did Reservoir Dogs, I was going to bring up the game for Reservoir Dogs. I – that was one of those things that was on my list to talk about and I completely forgot about it. Um, 
uh, the Reservoir Dogs game is a, a basically the missing heist. Uh, you play mm -hmm. as Buscemi and you have to wander around in the building where they're doing the diamond heist and stuff. And it's it's a good uh, companion piece to the film. I completely forgot it after I was done. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't mention the, the game. So yeah, it was cool because you play as a uh, Mr. Blunt, like his scenario, how he escaped. You play as a uh, at the end. You play as uh, I had the game, so I, I yeah yeah I have like it I too. Said, I was a huge, huge fan. I'm a huge fan of that film. So for me, I was like, I just had to have it. And uh, and then you, the way it ends is you play as Mr. Blue. And then like, I think if you pass it a certain way, like there's two different endings. One is like Buscemi gets away. And the other one is, you know, you actually, he, he gets killed by the cops and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I only, yeah man. I only played through it once. I, I, I set it to easy and had to play through it to see the game. So, uh, but I remember I still have it. It's, it's in a box somewhere, but uh, yeah, I, I love that game. Would you look so good as a Bronco? <laughs> <sighs> See, that one was hidden because I was thinking, like, yeah, he was a Bronco. Uh, he was a, he's in a Broncos uniform. What was that? You guys are making it hot in here. I hear the AC calling. <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. The sure. worst will be on his channel. Okay, yeah. so we've confused our audience completely here. So be sure to go to Cinephile Sanity and check that out. But make sure you subscribe to, to Russell Texas Hardcore uh, for his birthday. That's a nice yeah, present to get. Sure. Very affordable. And, uh, speaking of uh, uh, people subscribing to folks, uh, last week we had mentioned that our friend Dave, who had passed away, uh, Savage Zombie Reviews, the goal of the community was to get Dave's channel to a thousand subscribers as that was something he was looking forward to. And I just saw yesterday that they hit a thousand. So that thank you to anybody who subscribed to him. Thank you to anybody who shared out, you know, letting people know about it. it, it, it that, that was a very nice thing for people to do. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, definitely guys. Thank y'all very much for, you know, whether you pushed it or you had already been subscribed to him and, or still subscribed to him. I mean, each and every one of you, thanks so much. That's a that's a great. I, I saw the post, uh, and I was like, man, that's cool, man. That he got there. That's really yeah, really well, awesome. Especially in a, a relatively short time, it's hard to get people to get on board with something that weird. But yeah, that made me happy that you know that situation was strange, and especially if you weren't close to Dave, you know, just doing something out of the kindness of your heart like that. But so thanks to anybody who did that. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Um, I think you said uh, the. Uh, yeah, the, one. yeah, I believe it's from the creators of American Horror Story, maybe. They did like a couple of them. They did the OJ one, and then they did one about the guy that owned the Clippers, uh, Donald Sterling, I think his name is. Um, and they hmm. and that one, uh, uh, Lawrence Fishburne played Doc Rivers and stuff. Like, yeah, they they they're basically wow. yeah. I think I think later on they even made like an American crime story instead of American Horror Story. Like, I think there's the same type of deal that's floating wow. around. Yeah. Oh, Cut it out. Oh, wait a minute. That's not helping. <laughs> I'm guessing OJ is the dad of Cuba Gooding Jr. in that one. Yeah. And then she was uh, for Suburbia. Yeah, that one was on uh, Texas Russell. I know that one. Uh, I remember that one. Uh, let's see. When I when I see that Jay's like laughing, I'm like, I know it's him. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. No, what are you saying? Oh no, no, I was just uh, I was laughing at <laughs> Jay's laughing. He he, he has infective uh, emoji laughter. You know. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, we're next week. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Patrick Kelly, something isn't it? Huh. Oh yeah, yeah, Commando. Yeah, Sully, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He's talking about the bottle clinker mm -hmm. in the Warriors. Yeah, he he's a guy I think would make a good Freddy. Um, yeah, he was Sully in Commando. Mm -hmm. He's gonna kill him last. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie, man. Yeah. Uh, I love that movie, man. I can. I, it's like I can always like watch Commando. It's comfort, like comfort food for sure. Money oh, yeah, he, a lawsuit George Jefferson won a lawsuit. Hmm. Mm. So even then, yeah, his money was sort of uh, not not earned. You know? <laughs> it was a citywide blackout for Jefferson. 
Yeah, that's that the riot episode I was talking about where they the the blackout happens and they he had to get down to his store, so it, it was his first store. Yeah, see, I, don't, I didn't see that one. I've seen a bunch. Of, I've seen a bunch of them, but I don't. I don't recall that one. Plus, I was a kid when I watched it. Like my aunts and uncles would watch all this stuff. That's how I would watch uh, Sanford and Son, and you know Laverne and yeah. Shirley, and you know Andy Griffith, Green Acres. That was another one I forgot to mention before. Oh uh, yeah, I've I've seen all the Green Acres. I've, they call their mixed race neighbors kid the zebra. Yep, yep, Lionel. The, <laughs> oh man! Um, see, see that I don't remember that stuff when I was little. Yeah, the the Willises next door, Tom and Helen mm-hmm. Willis, Helen Willis were a mixed couple, and their son Lionel. Uh, they George would say stuff like that to him all the time. Things that you couldn't say, obviously now. Like what? Hey, Cal L. Daly's here. How you doing, man? Sir? There he is. <laughs> Welcome in front our- of Cal. <laughs> like uh, married your white husband yeah that's what you were just talking about uh from the jeffersons yeah yeah All roxy roker that's uh um uh lenny kravitz's mom i believe um, yeah 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 i knew that i i had heard i had heard that when uh what was it that album of his blew up the one that had american woman mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like that's when i had first heard that I heard that back then. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Uh, I don't remember Reservoir Dark Team, but I could have been better in some aspects. Uh, for fans of the movie, it's worth a playthrough. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I, I had to I had to have it. Like, I'm just a huge Reservoir Dogs fan. So I had that on VHS. I had that on, like, the Gas Can Blu-ray. Uh, or um, DVD, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Actually, I, I I bought uh, you know how you find the dump bins of like just the bare bones Blu-rays and stuff. Um, I found a Reservoir Dogs just a plain Blu-ray of it, and then I took the DVD out of the gas can version and put the Blu-ray in. So my Blu-ray nice. is in the gas can, yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, oh man, Nate's in the house, man. We oh, seen Nate, him. buddy, there he is. I've been missing Nate. Nate's got the yeah, best man. energy. He uh he always brings love and a in a, a warm sense of being to the chat. Anytime he's around, it's a nice nice face to see. Nate's the man. Everybody saying hi to Nate. Nate saying hi to everybody. Yeah, everybody uh, loves him. was from the Warriors. Yeah, T Bird. Yeah, Sully. Yeah, he was mm-hmm. good in he was good in the Crow. Man, he was awesome. Like as as uh sl- as sleazy as he was and everything, I didn't want to mess with him. He was like nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we agree, Jay. That's everybody who contributed to that or is uh, remaining subscribing to the man and everything. We appreciate it. That's, uh, that's yeah, a good definitely, thing. definitely, man. Uh, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, Nate. It has been a while, man. Glad to see you, brother. Uh, congrats on that. Everybody's saying hi to everybody. So happy Dave got to one K. He would have been amazed for sure. Yeah, yeah, man. His his. Uh, his smile and everything I can still, you know, from seeing his videos and even just interacting with him and mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. I can only imagine like the video he would do the uh, thank you video he would do for that man. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Nice. One. Yeah. Nice fact. Yeah. Monroe. I mean, Monroe's a huge crow fan. So of course he's going to bring that up, man. Uh, let's see. The Welk. It's American the Crime. Welk. Okay, there you go. Yeah, American Crime Story. Mm-hmm. See, I, I, I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah, I believe it's from the producers of American Horror Story, or maybe it's adjacent because FX owns that name or whatever, that brand. But mm-hmm. yeah, that, it was a weird spinoff they were trying to do. Yeah, they did a few of them. I can't remember. There was a third one, too. Like I say, they did the Donald Sterling one, which I don't know. Um, Ed uh, Ed O'Neill played the the old racist white guy. It was like they dusted off Al Bundy. What? Yeah, yeah, wow. so, yeah. Wild ride. Worst thing about the whole OJ thing was that it brought the Kardashians into the spotlight. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. <laughs> and then society just went downhill, man. That's what all fell. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Jay's like. Mm-hmm. Uh, people. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's rough, man. I thought it was. 
<laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yeah. Ray Ray J helped. Ray J helped. <laughs> Have you seen these Raycons that I just bought? Yeah. No. Uh, what's What's interesting about that is I remember, I remember when I was at work and she had that had that whole thing had just come out and she was being she was on a guest on E before the whole Kardashian show started happening and then mm -hmm. I was like oh, I was like so. You can be famous by being Paris Hilton's friend and having a porno leaked. Wow, mm -hmm. it's so simple. Why didn't well, I think she, of that? It was a real like uh, 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 like uh, the Rock and the Nation domination scenario. Like uh, uh, Paris Hilton had like a kind of a brat pack or rat pack that hung out with her with Kim Kardashian and uh, Tara. Uh, what's her name? Tara Reid was that her name? Bunny Lebowski. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they used to all hang out and get drunk and go out and party and stuff. And then at one at some point, uh, Kim Kardashian surpassed Paris Hilton. She had to go to the back of the line, and then there was the new leader of the pack. Uh -huh. And then you know, a few uh, a few dashes later, and all these ex husbands later, and here we are. Yeah, uh, pour yeah. a little out for uh, Chris. What's his name? That that basketball player she married. Yeah, you I remember know, him. Man. No, no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah, was just I like, man. Yeah, that was I, strange. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, man. I mean, for her to go from, uh, I think she was like, she was a football player. Reggie, Reggie Bush. Yeah, Reggie who Bush. Who also won the Heisman at USC. It all, it's like the Marvel Universe. It all, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fat Man Dave, not OJ. Uh, so said the girl next door, a okay, a crime story, Sylvie and Likens. Hmm. <laughs> our legal, see, our legal counsel had to clarify to the folks, yeah, re watching. Yeah. Uh, San Francisco and all the family were based, uh, yeah, I think I, I heard you say that once before. Uh, um. At least the Sanford and Son one. I remember Russell saying that on a previous stream that it's based off of a, of a Brit comedy. Uh, you can buy. A... Okay, I, was, I had to read it to myself. You know, yeah, exactly. Don't say it out loud. Read it first, just to make yeah. sure. <laughs> oh man, hello. <laughs> and with that, our HR is here. here. All right, welcome, Kara and Oscar. <laughs> Pants on, oh. everyone. Pants on. <laughs> Ryan Johnson did a few. He did the... Yeah. Hmm. The Betty uh, Davis, Joan Crawford one. Like, they were, you know, rivals and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Al, Al Bundy. His birthday is today? I don't know. That. I didn't know that. Interesting. We just brought him up. Hmm. Wow. Uh, we have community... To do a video, I think uh, JT already did a tribute, uh, somewhat of a tribute recently. A lot of uh, folks uh, put out nice things, like we we shouted out the professors before. That was a very touching. Mm -hmm. um, our friend Karen from uh, oh goodness, she used to be Ocean Chicks and more, but uh, what is she called now? Someone put in the chat Karen's new name. I'll forget it. Um, but she did a really nice one, a twenty minute one the other day. Um, so uh, yeah, a lot of folks out there you know, kind of healing in their own ways and then giving a shout out to a guy who deserved the love. So mm -hmm. for sure. For sure. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get past it, Kara. Don't, hang in there. We still got uh, the Maxine trailer and the Joker two trailer coming. So just bear with us. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> kind of keeps roping us back into the whole OJ yeah. thing. So uh, yeah. yeah, we'll get, we're going to, we're going to skip, we're going to get <laughs> rolling from there. Uh huh. Uh, and the Warriors, the Punks, roller skaters, uh, also Wanderers is one of the. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I think that's one of the things that's so cool about the Warriors is the different gangs, like the Baseball Furies and the Lizzie Bordens and stuff, or the Lizzies. You know, like all of those are just so you know it, it builds the world out and flushes it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if you're familiar, I'm not, but I learned this later. If you're familiar with the New York train system and the subway lines and stuff, 
you can you can track where they move within the actual train system so you understand okay they're at coney island they have to get to you know and you can follow the stops and the actual exits along they're all you know to to real life they're not made up for the story nice nice so if you're a new york person be sure to let us know if that's true the horror pole sex cat dad coming to netflix soon <laughs> Uh yeah, <laughs> so with that. Uh, speaking well, speaking of, of course, guess, Max, the, did you yeah. see the trailer for Maxine? <laughs> there we go. Hi. Yes, I, I did. I got you. I'm, I'm your Cato Kalen. Damn it! <laughs> oh man. Um, you're my uh. What's the what's what was the lawyer's name? Uh, 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 Johnny Cochran, uh, uh, um, Robert Kardashian, uh, Effie yeah. Bailey. Effie um, Bailey. Why do I know his entire staff? This sucks. <laughs> like you said, it was everywhere, man. It was everywhere. Well, you are the horror cat dad, so you are a bit of a Furman. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna bring up the that Chappelle skit, man. When you said that. <laughs> Fear, fear, Furman, Furman, German, Furman. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I did see the trailer for Maxine. Um, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Um, it intrigued me. I'm if, for those of you who haven't seen it, there's uh, the third in the trilogy of um, X, and then Pearl, and now this mm. one is Maxine, but it's three X's in the middle. Like she's still following her kind of uh, porn star lifestyle or whatever, but they. They do it very 80s. Um, yep. I thought, uh, like I mentioned to you, I thought it was a lot like Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Like it was very, um, a lot of neon, a lot of uh, 80s tracks, a lot of cool outfits. But they're going to tie it in with the Night Stalker murders, which yeah, that's it, the historical fiction aspect of it kind of throws me off, but I kind of dig it also. Well, I'm wondering if they're going to do like what Tarantino does, where it's like, you know, like like that where they like they did with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. She gets like captured the by the Night Stalker and then escapes or kills him or something. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm kind of yeah. curious, like if they're gonna do that. I hope they don't. I hope they kind of leave that looming as a, you know, just to have that added tension. Oh, what if this happens? Or what if she gets caught by this? What if she's one one of the people that gets? That's the person who stops her reign of terror. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I hope they don't do that you know i think it'll kind of like cheapen the ending or she she's the one that kills the night stalker yeah something you know, like I, that you know they, yeah they, i think it would be kind of like, it would be a letdown yeah revisionist history stuff kind of gets historical fiction whatever you want to call it it gets on my nerves sometimes it if it's done right it's fun but at the same time it's also like disrespectful to real life in some ways i don't know mm -hmm. but uh the main thing also you and i were talking about with the maxine trailer is the cast like they uh, there's no the uh, X, the first one, really didn't have many famous people in it. It was uh, um, what's her name, uh, 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 Mia Goth. She's probably the most famous person. And oh, uh, what's her name, uh, Jenna Ortega. Jenna Ortega. Yeah, um, she became the it girl after that. Yeah, and um, then uh, I think uh, Kid Cudi. Is that his name? How do you say his name? Is he in there? Yeah, he's he's uh, he's playing the one of the actors. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was Kid Cudi. I didn't. I was unaware. I didn't um, know that either until later, and then uh, somebody said it, and I was like, "Oh, that's right," because uh, I saw that Bill and Ted movie, the third one. Oh, yeah, the, the third one. Yeah, what was it called? Bill and Ted's War Face of Music. I was gonna say Face World Tour or whatever, oh, yeah. but yeah, that mm. one's bad. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, the the Maxine has uh, Giancarlo Esposito, uh, Kevin Bacon. Um, mm. So a bunch of faces I recognized in there it looked a little more high high budget high class than the the first one or the first yeah two. I mean do, do you think that's gonna like um that kind of cheapens the or kind of takes away the indie feel to it yeah I don't know I mean I, when I saw Giancarlo Esposito in particular I kind of sat up in my seat like ooh you know because he's always one that's whenever he turns up I'm usually happy to see him um 
and Kevin Bacon's at a stage where because he lost all that money in the Bertie Madoff scam, like him and his wife were broke and they basically just have to like make a ton of movies to try to get their retirement money back. So, you know, Kevin Bacon will turn up in damn near anything. He'll come to your birthday party if you pay him enough. Yeah, it's like uh, like Nick Cage for the longest time. Like he yeah, was kind same. of broke, right? Yeah, like, he had the, he had filed for bankruptcy because he owned like seven castles. <laughs> he he owned like, one. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I think Johnny yeah. Depp is is kind of in that position a little bit too. I think he had like money trouble because he was just spending like a crazy person. He would see a house he liked and buy it and stuff. Well, well I think it's also because of uh, like the whole his trial and stuff too i think that yeah kind of completed a lot of his stuff and then um but yeah no going back to maxine like i think when i when i saw when i saw carlos esposito i was like oh man cool he's i know he's gonna bring a solid you know mm-hmm. he's gonna definitely bring a solid character and then when i saw kevin bacon i was like oh man he's playing like some you know sleazy private detective that's pretty cool mm-hmm. no i mean so, well you know he he was in uh, what he called a, a wild things, and he played you know a similar character. And Giancarlo reminded me of um, uh, his character in Usual Suspects because he has the like fedora and the suit and mm-hmm. stuff. So as soon as I saw him, I was like, oh hey, nice. Well, so uh-huh. sick, sick of bleeding sequels. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, is this one really a sequel though? Would you consider it because it's like I feel like because. I mean, I think it's only a sequel in the one character, right? Because it's not she's yeah. the only one that's coming over. Would you really call that a sequel? I'm not too sure. I mean, I, I guess it is because it picks up, you know, the 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 first one X. Obviously, if you start watching it, you're going to realize, well, one of these people isn't going to die because she's in a new movie. So mm-hmm. it, it, it kind of ruins it for that effect. But um, it's interesting to see how, you know, the life she was leading in that movie led her to a path that she had to escape from, you know, her substance abuse and the violence out at the farm and everything. And as she, when she gets away from it, and then she just ends up in a similar type cycle again, you know, like a few years later, I think X takes place in like 81 and, and Maxine takes place in 85, maybe. Uh, I think X takes takes supposed to take place uh, late seventies, isn't it? Because it's supposed to be like mirroring Texas Chainsaw. I, I think I can't it, remember. It, it for is sure. supposed to mirror Texas Chainsaw, but for some reason, I thought it starts off like a big subtitle or a big title card in the beginning, and it's I thought it said nineteen eighty one, and it has like the American flag and the letters or whatever. Like, um, mm. I don't know. It looks like the Evil Can Evil font. <laughs> is Evil Can Evil a font? It feels like a font. <laughs> It should be somebody in the chat. Let us yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> is evil can evil a font? Um, oh, here we go. Oh, Jesus. Be careful, be careful, Larry. <laughs> Tread lightly. Tread lightly. <laughs> it's like now I see anything like with OJ. I'm like reading it before I put it up, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm putting it up because I, I mean, you know, it's good. This is like great material here. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Michael oh. likes Eric more than Pam. Uh, I like Pam better. Uh, I like young Pam better. Older Pam got to be kind of a pain in the ass. Like she would be like, I'd see her on Fox News talking about how they need to ban porn and stuff. And it's like, aren't you Pamela Anderson? What are you talking about? I think Jenna Jameson is going through that too. Like she's talking about how like porn is bad and stuff. And it's like, you know who you are, right? Like, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think uh, if I had to, I mean, Pam is more of the, the bombshell for the longest time. But I think, yeah. I think uh, like when you see Erica Liniak in uh, Under Siege, oh man, there's another movie too that she's like, I think it's with uh, Tom Berenger and somebody else. Uh, Chasers. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, she's that was incredible. the first time I saw her. And then uh, later on, I saw her in Under Siege. And then I think she was in Baywatch later on. I never really watched much Baywatch. There you go. Eric, so you got another one? Got but he's, for Erica. That's Eric voting for Erica, though. That's cheating. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear Lord. You guys. I love you so much. <laughs> That's our, our department for you. 
<laughs> yep, that's that's our HR department. We have the special one. <laughs> Erica and Baywatch, <laughs> not so much. Now Erica and Under Siege. Yep, ten times better than Pam. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I don't know what it is. Like, I'm sure, like every copy of the VHS back in the day, that whole scene was just. It's all lines right now. Yeah, it's got the pause lines all through it. Mm -hmm. I remember when it used to be on cable, sometimes you would see it and it's like, oh, Steven Seagal, they've taken over the boat. So the, the cake scene is coming up. So just hang out. Mm -hmm. for a minute. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Ellie, she is something else, man. Whenever she gets some, you know, sleepy time on somebody, it's not just me, either me or my wife. She's totally on board for that stuff. <laughs> I had posted a picture earlier in my community tab about uh, uh, saying I couldn't release a video today because apparently the audio got corrupted. So um, I need to fix that. So it'll probably come out tomorrow. And uh, I posted also about uh, Brody and Russell's birthday, Texas Russell's birthday. So, and then I included a cat picture, you know, oh, well, that Ellie just sprawled out on me, passed out. Yeah, you also put a video out this week of some uh, pickups, some vinyls and whatnot, uh, just some uh, basically a loose catch-up session with Larry and some of the cool things he's been picking up lately. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you know, when I when I saw my buddy Monroy uh, last weekend, he had given me a birthday gift, and uh, it's like some of that stuff, as I said in the video, was, yeah, man, a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool stuff. And then I had picked up a whole bunch of other stuff, and I was like, you know what? I mean, I can't really – some of the stuff I'm not – going to review so it's just you know it's just figured i'd share it with everybody i mean uh, I don't really yeah so always. i figured you know what just share with everybody what i just recently got so mm -hmm. but, uh yeah man it was uh again you know thanks again Roy, man really really dig the stuff uh the case scene in undersea you got teenage me <laughs> kind of through some rough times <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, oh man, John Carlos, you know, yeah, Jin Carlo. Mm -hmm. uh, no camera, no, no, Carmen Electra. I liked as um, uh, she hosted an MTV show for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. what was or she was the the I think she replaced Jenny McCarthy as the um, on Singled blind. Out, maybe. Yeah, was it was a Singled Out. I was gonna say Blind Date, but no, that's not that one. Same diff, yeah, same thing, but the same thing, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the same no, show. No, um. I have a whole theory about all of them. She was married to Dennis Rodman for a while too. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Dave, what's his name? The guitarist, uh, Dave Navarro, Toro? Dave oh. Navarro. Oh uh, yeah. That's the right. Chili Peppers guy. Yeah. Jane's addiction, you know? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. That's what he I'm was everywhere, about. man. Just like, yeah, he was. you know, and Carmel, in Carmel Electra, he's everywhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's just say, thank God my copy of Under Siege was a DVD. <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Oh, when I feel depressed, I go into a mental palace and replay the <laughs> You know what's actually, it, it, nobody ever notices, but in that scene, when she pops out of the cake and Seagal, the reason she doesn't notice Seagal is because she has her eyes closed while she's dancing. And it, mm -hmm. like it's a bit of a character trait. Like she's embarrassed to be doing what she's doing. So she's like got her eyes closed to just kind of get through it. And then after she wakes up, opens her eyes, like, wait a minute, there's nobody here except for this ponytailed guy. <laughs> the mojo priest. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. No, well, see, I thought it was because she was like, because didn't she take some like um some motion like sickness. Yeah. Oh, like to, Dramamine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like I, I was thinking that's why her eyes were closed. Yeah. I see, I always, I always took it as like she, it was a gig she took. She was Miss July or whatever they say mm -hmm. what, what she is. So I always just thought she took it as a gig that sort of demeaned her, you know, and then she kind of like had to close her eyes to kind of just, you know, dance her way through it and hopefully get it over with. But, ah, <laughs> So Kara with the uh, the medical facts. I think that's a, a HIPAA violation. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that. <laughs> Older Pam is a... <laughs> yeah, there you exactly. go. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. After When she married, uh, she married a magician. Who she married? Chris Angel? One of them. I don't know. She married some damn magician and she moved to Vegas and she was part of his residency. Like, you know, how you saw a woman in half and stuff like she was his assistant. 
So the, like, there's all this footage of her like wearing the you know magician sidekick outfit, like a sequined onesie or whatever. Uh, I, man, I, I'm, I'm totally it wasn't Chris Angel; it was a different one. Uh, Holly from the the uh, Girls Next Door. She married Chris Angel, but uh, oh. but a Pam married some I don't remember who a, a magician. I don't know. I'm not a big magician groupie. Yeah, I, I I'm totally out of the loop of you know these uh ex playmates. You haven't been keeping up on old Pam. Yeah. No, no. I saw her in Bora and I was like, I was perfectly fine. It was bad for Jenna because she you read this one quietly before you read it out loud, Larry. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh Oh, and a good follow up, a good follow up to that from our HR. Yeah, the laughing of uh, pictures of Oscar laughing and then her giving the face palm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, see, even the professor loved that one. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one because you, you it, it, we weren't we weren't expecting it. It was a perfect punchline. Oh boy, it's a good thing you caught it though because I was already like. I was already good. Best full force read. Well, that's the great thing about OJ is it's in all caps, so it jumps out at you when you read it. Like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I see OJ. <laughs> what was uh, Kathy Bates and John Lithgow, missionary, missionary's family goes into Amazon. I don't think I've seen that one. I think I have. Um, wasn't there one with River Phoenix that was like uh, Mosquito Coast? I think it was like the exact same movie. It was like uh, I, th I think know. I remember that one. Yeah, like that uh, one missionary. I think I do remember. Basically, a uh, uh, you know, a uh, fish out of water story of people who go live in the you know uh, harsh areas. Ah, uh, yes. Happy birthday, Brody! Brody. 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 All right, there we go. That's, <laughs> two. That's two. That's two us part. Oh, actually, it's our birthday. I almost yeah. So <laughs> that's one on that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Cody, mean Texas Russell. Yeah, well, you too, Russell. You're the man At least not a rise up there. Yeah, see, that's what I mean about Bronze. He's that's what I'm saying. Not a lot of folks probably gave a lot of thought to that character bit with her eyes being closed because they were there was so much else going on. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, you know, obviously distracted by other stuff. The cake, that cake looked delicious. The cakes and, and then, that. and then nobody, nobody, nobody cut into him. Man, sadly, no, no. It probably just rotted there on the deck. <laughs> oh, family two boys. All right. As I remember the show, I don't care. I don't care. I feel I like, like Carmen. <laughs> we all have our favorites, Kara. I don't blame you. Uh, it was very nice. Weird onesie. Oh, uh, that's a that's a Pam thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, gotcha. Just just Google Pamela Anderson and magician. I'm sure you'll see the stuff I saw because that's when I was. I think that was maybe early thousands, mid thousands. She huh. yeah, she married some unknown magic a magician who's unknown to me, I should say. I don't know. Hmm. Mosquito Coast is very stuff. fun, man. Yeah, I went through a uh, yeah. I think everybody yeah. did. Oh, he I was mean, he was the Heath Ledger of our era. Like people mm -hmm. had so much hope and promise, like he thought they thought he was gonna be basically Leonardo DiCaprio and and he ended up passing away, so he never got to fulfill that, you know, hope. Okay. Mr. Dan and Horror. How are you doing, sir? Thanks for That's stopping by, good sir. Mr. Dan's the coolest. Uh, Seagulls MP5 in that shot was... Oh, he was looking at the gun. Yeah, it was a very impressive gun. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's saying hi to Mr. Dan. And yeah. yeah, it looks like I'm cut up on the chat here. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, going into our next topic, we did see... Uh, we talked about Maxine, and uh, we did see... See, also, I did see that we talked about the we're going to talk about the Joker trailer, right? That just yeah. came out this week. Joker uh, Fale Adu, I think it's called. Um, the uh, when when the word came out that Lady Gaga was going to be Harley Quinn and that there was going to be a lot of musical aspects of it, a lot of folks were turned off, and I was kind of intrigued. I was like, well, that first Joker was such a weird like taxi driver fight club type movie that, you know, the idea of them transitioning into a musical doesn't scare me off. It makes me interested of how they're going to pull it off. Cause I, mm. I, they've earned up enough trust with me after that first one where I'm willing to give them a chance. I'll check it out. And when I saw the trailer, it was exactly what I thought. It was like, no, they're going to do it artsy and cool. And they're going to turn up the, 
the cinematography on it and everything and and some of the shots gaga i thought looked fine i thought she yeah. uh, you know seeing her as a mental patient and stuff is kind of a believable role for her you know she <laughs> Well, wasn't uh, she like uh, an addict in uh, Silver Linings Playbook or something? I never or, saw uh, Silver Playbook. I never saw, no, I never saw it I, either. I feel like she was like, wasn't she like a down and out type character in some other movie? I don't know. Um, she did what? When a Star is Born, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. She did yeah, that I one. never saw that either. No, I, I remember it's her and Bradley Cooper in that one, yeah. I think. No, Silver Lining, uh, that, that was Jennifer Lawrence. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, but she was. Wasn't Bradley Cooper with her in the, in the um yes in the other oh, one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so the, you, uh, right church on pew got yeah um. <laughs> no but I mean uh, going back to what you were saying yeah I think um, yeah I was very uh, I was very surprised by it because I was thinking like I liked I did like the first one I thought it was pretty good uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I liked it as much as everybody else did okay but I did I I did like it I thought uh you know. Phoenix was, I mean, Phoenix is a, is an awesome actor. Um, it, that's one of those where, uh, as we've discussed before, when I have low or no expectations, a movie is real. I have a big zone to maybe get knocked off my feet, but if I have huge expectations, it's easy to be let down. So that Joker movie, I was, I was kind of DC universe out. And that was like one of the, I mean, most of the DC movies prior to that weren't working. And that was, you know, I heard Scorsese was going to be attached as a producer and other stuff. And I was just like, this sounds wild. Yeah. And when I watched it, I enjoyed it. You know, I was very pleasantly surprised. I thought it was an interesting, you know, it was a very sad movie. And I don't yeah. really, I don't dig movies where um, they break the old school Hollywood code. Like, I don't like that when crime pays, you know, if someone's going to be mm -hmm. a villain, they need to die at the end or they need, you know, they're, they're, they have to show that crime doesn't pay. So having the a villain as your protagonist of your movie is, is an odd choice, you know? But yeah, um, I mean, it uh, well. yeah, it, it definitely worked well. I mean, I think um, it it really, like you said, you you hit the nail on the head with that. With um, at the time, you know, it's like superhero fatigue was already settling in. I mean, yeah. movies like Logan. That's why you know Logan was mm -hmm. such a good movie because it kind of yeah. was like on a a dark, you know. Um, the way it ended up and knowing like the story of that, all the X-Men were gone and just, I mean, that one was a dark movie. It was, it was pretty sad oh, to watch professor X struggle with dementia and then what that would do to someone with his powers and stuff. Yeah. Like that's an intriguing bit of storytelling, you know? So, you know, and to see Wolverine or Logan, the all powerful guy, and he's just, you know, a limo driver laying low, trying to finish out his days, you know, yeah. like, Protecting Crazy. the professor, man. I mean, yeah, it was. It's mm -hmm. it's it's rough, man. But it was really really good. It's still yeah, uh, one cool. of my like favorites. Illegal immigration subplot, and yeah, mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of heavy stuff in there for a superhero movie. So yeah, Logan and and the Joker, like I say, both uh, has a lot. Joker has a lot of taxi driver and Fight Club, like you know, mental mental wellness uh, stuff in there, which obviously you would need for a Joker movie. Yeah, and then I think this one. See, my thing is. Uh, I, I mean, I obviously I don't know. This hasn't come out yet. My only thing is, I feel like they're gonna pull what they did in the first one. So all the over exaggerated parts, it's all in yeah. their heads. That's I, my. That's just me. I think I I have a feeling that that's what's gonna happen. When when we had talked about it, this before, you had previously mentioned that to me that you thought maybe the musical stuff, the big bright glitzy stuff, would be fantasy in their heads. Mm. And I felt like the trailer kind of alluded to that, that they're living in a, a real, you know, a tertiary world, but then there's also a fantastical world that's going on within their mental insanity and stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't know. I've, I've Some of the imagery, like there's that the shot in the trailer where she draws the red smiley face and then he leans his face into it that's and a, turns into the Joker. That was fantastic. Like, that's, yeah. a great, that's a really good shot. Like I, I, I saw the trailer a couple of times and that was the, the one shot that kind of gave like, me wow. a little goose bumpy, little goose bumpy. Yeah. I was like, that's um, pretty cool. The way that was shot. And there's that famous uh, drawing of the Joker and Harley Quinn where he's kind of holding her. They almost look like people on a wedding cake. They both have like fancy outfits on. I think he's got a tux and they're kind of like, looks like they're slow dancing. Mm -hmm. And there's this scene where they're dancing on top of a, a, a hotel, which looks to be like the Arkham hotel 
which yeah, yeah. Hotel Arkham obviously you would think that that's in your mind. They're in Arkham Asylum, but they're transforming it into a hotel in their mind because they're freaking yeah. crazy. So like just some of that stuff really intrigued me. So yeah, I, I, I right now it's a thumbs up for me. I'm intrigued. They, they, I'm, I'm interested to see where they take it. Yeah, I, I was, I had been avoiding it just because I was like, eh, you know, I think, yeah, you know, just what I had been hearing and stuff. And I was just like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to feel it, but no, man, I was actually pleasantly surprised better than, like you said before, the Crow, <laughs> the Crow remake, definitely better than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the Crow stuff had so much action. They're really trying to push the heavy action, you know, violent action film. And, and you know, there is an aspect of action in the Crow, but I mean, theoretically, there's a you know action in Batman and Joker stuff too. So you know, mm. I don't know, it's just all how you handle it, present it. Sadly, after getting one physical, the Erica character, <laughs> she got she got boinked. <laughs> Professor uh, Bester party and didn't end well. <laughs> that's pretty good, Professor Bester's bachelor party. <laughs> you remember that, right? From uh, yeah. uh, Adam's family <laughs> value. Yeah, when he's marrying uh, Joan Cusack, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I still like that second one. That second one's still pretty good. Did a great Joker after the Crow. Really, Sting did a Joker. I didn't know that. Yeah, when he was in TNA for a while, um, he needed to change the Crow character. I'm assuming either because w WWE owned it or the Crow people were going to sue or something. And he became like Joker Sting. So he had like crazy, he looked like Heath Ledger. You know, he, he mm. put makeup on and looked like a crazy clown. I wasn't really watching them, but I was like, oh, this is what Sting's on now, huh? Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. I, I once, I mean, I feel like once WCW was, was done, I stopped. I think that's when I started stop watching like wrestling. Yeah, I I I hung out and watched the, the invasion angle after they merged the two companies, and and that was such a letdown. I I, I kind of tapped out around the whole John Cena, Batista, Randy Orton era. I, I was like, I wasn't interested as much. You know? mm -hmm. Jeff says uh, the trailer for Joker two left him numb. Not a big fan of the musical take they're going for myself, but. Probably still give it a lot, a chance. Um, yeah, I was in the same boat. Um, yeah, it was kind of weird. I was like, well, they're going to do a musical. And I don't know. There were some aspects of that. I was just kind of like, that's what kind of kept me from watching the trailer. But when you had mentioned it, I was like, yeah, I better I better take a look at this and just kind of see, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I was surprised. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, we'll have to see how much actual music is in it or whatever, you know. But um I feel like those are two separate audiences. The uh, the the crowd that goes and sees musicals with Lady Gaga in it, and then the crowd that wants action, Joker, crime drama, Batman stuff. That feels like those aren't the same piece of the pie chart. You know, the the Venn diagram doesn't really cross there. I need to watch that one, The House of Gucci. I never saw that one. That one, uh, yeah, it's got oh, Jared yeah. Leto, uh, Kylo Ren. I mean, it's got a lot of people in that one. <laughs> Kylo Ren. <laughs> <laughs> You're never gonna let it go, are you? <laughs> I'm taking this nope. fight to the grave, Ryan Johnson, you bastard. Somebody say DC. Of course, Superman pops up. Yep. <laughs> uh, even though it took a lot of influences, inspiration from text driver, yeah, King of Comedy, and even a bit of Death Wish, in my opinion, the subway scene. Yeah, like like I said, uh, you definitely see all those elements. I mean, uh, oh, for sure, yeah. It was basically those films like slept with uh, DC, you know, universe, you know, and uh, yeah. I, I even me when I first saw it, I was gonna like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna like this, and then uh, I saw it and I was like, wow, this is pretty good. I I didn't know Todd Phillips can do you know something serious like this, you know, just the cinematography, the color correction, all of it in that <laughs> first one. Like I said, it, it gave me Fight Club vibes. You know, like mm -hmm. a person struggling with their own reality and everything. And, um, but just, uh, the look of the film, like the, it was a very, um, it was intentionally drab and depressing. Like it was the, the rooms were supposed to bum you out the small apartments, the jobs they had. It was all just very like, that's a heavy movie for a superhero flick or a you know, DC flick. Yeah. And I mean, it goes back to, uh, for that one, I will say it goes back to what I, I've, said many a times before that that world felt lived in 
I yeah, think oh, that's what sure. also yeah. pulled me in for for that one. I think uh, that it it actually felt lived in. You know, you saw his apartment, you saw like the even his neighbor's apartment that he was like the one that ended up being like he thought he was crazy or whatever. At the end, I was like, oh man, that was a bummer for me. You know, yeah. But it turned out that it was like that wasn't the case that she was like into him or whatever. I was like, oh man. Mm-hmm. But then but it that- goes back to, you know. Well, we talked on, before. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I just, to me, it built on, you know, that's his that world, that fantasy world that he was playing in his head. You know. Yeah. Well, that's that's kind of what I, like I said, I don't like the idea that a villain is the protagonist of your movie, and I'm supposed to have some sort of empathy for the Joker. But then when you go back to the comic books of the original Joker stuff about like the the Red Hood and all these things, and like him joining this gang, and you know, like. There's, there's all sorts of comic books about, you know, the Joker's origin story. And this one, when it ended, it showed that he inspired a bunch of people to be like, uh, um, what are they called? The uh, uh, Guy Fox, you know, like mm-hmm. uh, many Jokers are out there recreating like copycat crimes. So it explains the, sort of a multiverse of Jokers. It's like, oh, this one Joker inspired lunatics everywhere to copy him. So that's why we get Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson, you know, whatever. It, you, it makes brings everything together. Ties it all together. <laughs> hey, no, no. name missed it. How you doing, brother? Thanks for stopping by, man. Uh, I think this is the first time we see you on here. Uh, Welcome. No, name misfit does uh, some really cool, uh, some really cool like shorts with uh, his neck figured, man. If y'all, if y'all definitely check his his channel out, he's got some, he's got some funny stuff. Uh, but no, man, thanks, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Crime doesn't pay. Motto of the day. Right on. Well, well said by our HR rep. Yeah, OJ, we're talking to you. Yeah. Um, she's another person I've talked about this before with different people in our modern culture who seem to put their toe in a lot of different waters. You mm-hmm. know, she wanted to be an actor, she wanted to be a singer, she wanted to, you know, be on Broadway or whatever. Like she, she, you know. She was in the Super Bowl halftime show. You know, I mean, she she's done. She's lived out her dream, and it's nice to see people, you know, succeed unless they're truly awful. Or they're OJ. Yeah. No, once again, looking in your d- direction of your casket, OJ. <laughs> yeah, I did like that last shot of the trailer. Yeah, that, I still think yeah. that that that's the uh, you know, and the the thing that's gonna bum me out since it's a trailer. What if they don't actually have that in the movie? Oh, well, the first one, right? The first one had, uh, oh, no, wait, I'm thinking of the Batman movie where they had the hidden Joker scene at the end with the old boy from Saltburn. Um, uh, the new, the the Robert Pattinson Batman had a, a, a secret ending that they cut and that was playing all over the internet where they, Batman goes and sees the Joker in Arkham Asylum and, yeah, mm-hmm. played by, uh, what's his name from Saltburn? Uh, um, Barry McCockner? No, whatever his last name is, I can't think of it. Um, <laughs> I don't hate Gaga and I don't like her. Take that for what it is. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel like that. She's just sort of there. But I, I mean, I, I find her to be, you know, we grew up during Madonna's era. So, you know, I find her derivative of Madonna. It's like, yeah, I've seen all this before, but, yeah, you know. See, when she was first her. coming out in the in her music and I feel like, okay, she's just trying to imitate madonna or share kobe bryant is to michael jordan as lady gaga is to madonna yeah it's just like i've seen all this before (laughs) so you have a poker face on your face i feel like i'm trapped in a bad romance (sighs) so now we went from almost slightly almost getting canceled to bad puns awesome Oh, that's what I'm looking. That's what I like. I'm open to it. Yeah, I'm some, yeah, some bad Karen romance. Karen Karen Gaga. Yeah, Jeff was there with me. <laughs> good to go at the same time. Oh, geez, these little stones. Uh, anyone else have a pun to share? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're all punned out. <laughs> Pun in the of- house. It's <laughs> all I've got. I, I think hate, I'm good. Hate onions, I but hate like onion rings. Yeah. 
I don't really like uh I don't love tomatoes that much, but I love ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> said musical for Joker 2. I said the glove doesn't fit. That's <sighs> <sighs> All right, I'm back. Oh I'm back. man. <laughs> Jack you know one thing is true. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, I've been watching uh, uh every now and then I catch the old yeah, we're back to OJ. Um every now and then the, the old Batman will be on TV when I'm flipping through, and I always stop and check out Cesar Romero's Joker. Um when I was a kid, I never noticed his mustache being painted over. Now as an adult, that's all I see. Yeah, I, I I saw it. I just thought he had like so back then before I realized it, like in the first few episodes, like, why does his lip look weird? And yeah, then, well, and that then after a while I started, you know. Yeah. So when I started getting older, I was like, Oh, okay, they're just I need to shave it off, man. Yeah. What else is Cesar Romero doing? You know what I mean? You can Right. <laughs> you go ahead and read it. You go ahead and read it. <laughs> think we've taken enough stabs at OJ now. <laughs> well, I mean, Kara, you asked for the puns. I mean. No. <laughs> There's the knife. Yep. Stabbed him with the Legend of Zelda knife. <laughs> and I have one more bad joke in me. <laughs> oh, man, that's nuts. Oh, dude. No, um. No, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully it'll be good. Um, I'm hoping Maxine's going to be good. Oh, uh, one other trailer. I don't know if we talked about this before. Did you see the trailer for Monster Mash yet? No, you had mentioned it to me, and I was supposed to check it out, and I completely dropped the ball on that one. Okay, we'll save that for next week then. That one's okay. Interesting. Um, That's the, is that the Michael Madsen one? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, it got mentioned. I think maybe last week, but I hadn't, I forgot to check it out. It's it's a low budget joint, right? Like a mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it's an asylum film or something. Yeah. So uh, Frank Sinatra did at one point want to want the roller Joker, huh? That's hmm. wild. Interesting. As a Riddler, yeah, he was yeah. Frank Gorshin was an awesome Riddler. Um, he 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 always yeah he was always I always like when he came out man yeah even uh even uh Burgess Meredith as um this is a penguin, penguin. yeah it always it, it always trips me out man when I think about it now it's like freaking you know Mickey is the penguin mm. you know like because back then I didn't realize it and then like you know as I got older I was like oh Mickey I love Mickey and then all of a sudden as I got older I realized it was him I was like oh that's nuts man it's crazy um. The one uh, uh, Burgess Meredith will always be from the Twilight Zone episode, the one where he uh, he'd wished his whole life that he just had all the time to sit and quietly read books. And mm -hmm. then the world ended and he was the last man left on Earth and he could read all he wanted and never be bothered. And then he broke his glasses. <laughs> so, that's a twist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how that's what it'll always be to me. He's like the not enough time in the world guy or whatever. Not it's enough called. time. Mm hmm. There you go. Does someone say Asylum? <laughs> now it's dark. Did a review on it. Uh, yeah, Jim did a review on it. Yeah. Um, like I said, man, it's a, it is an Asylum film, so no, it looks interesting. I... It looks interesting, to say the least. No, <laughs> uh, that would have been a good Joker musical. Imagine old blue eyes Joker breaking into song, singing Fly Me to the Moon. Oh. Mm -hmm. I can, Would you see? Go ahead. I can imagine the, uh, um, you know, now seeing the the Joker two trailer, it's easy to imagine Frank as that role. But prior mm. to even connecting musicals to the Joker, it's Frank Sinatra seems insane as the Joker. But yeah, like I couldn't see him. You know, I can't see Jack. I can't see anyone else playing Jack's Joker. You know. No, no, no. I can't. Like, I mean, to me, he's still my. He's always going to be my favorite Joker, aside from Mark Hamill doing the voice of Joker. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just I don't know, man. I mean, Jack Nicholson's my my favorite actor of all time. Ledger's Ledger's Joker was pretty dang awesome, just because he figured out a way to not redo Jack Nicholson. Right. Like 
Christian Bale is a good Batman, but he's not that different than Michael Keaton's Batman. He's just mm -hmm. Bruce Wayne and sometimes Batman. Well, there's this whole voice thing. But other than that, it's pretty much the same. But Ledger's Joker is feels like it's a different universe from oh, yeah. Joker. Yeah. Yeah, I remember for the long I never saw that one in the theater because it was already out of the theaters. And then uh, I just based off of uh, uh, a friend of mine at the time, like he told me, Oh man, it's coming out on 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 DVD. You should you should buy it. I'm like, is it that good? Because I liked Batman Begins, but I wasn't like, eh, I need to run out and go get it. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then uh, and then I picked it up, just like okay, I'll I'll check it out. And dude, I was hooked as soon as that first scene when they do the heist. I was just like, wow, man, this it it pulled me in. And then that scene where he does uh, you know, how about a magic trick? Yeah, the guy tries to get like get him, and he just like boom with that pencil. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, it's gonna be that kind of movie. I'm like, all right, I'm in. Yeah, it, it was weird that uh, I was working for a, a video store corporation, uh, MGA, and I work was working like sixty hours a week uh, running video stores, and like I would have wow. to go, you know, various places and make sure their wall was set up and their marketing was set up. And, you know, every Tuesday you had to change the wall in the video store to accommodate for new releases. So the whole wall of the building would have to be shift. And um, when uh, uh, Batman Begins came out, I, I literally had no idea there was a new Batman movie. And as I was stocking the walls, I remember being like, they made a new Batman and I never heard about it. This is insane. And then I watched it and the whole stuff with uh, the scarecrow and that horror element in it, like with Batman as a demon and the blood, mm -hmm. like tar pouring out of his mouth and stuff. I was like, they're taking Batman some interesting places. So then when oh, the I dark night came out, it was like, whoa, like, yeah. Yeah, well, even when he's flying over the people at the end, and people just see like the flaming coming out of the mouth and the eyes yeah, are glowing, I was like, "Wow, man, man that's this this is pretty good, man." I mean, yeah. Uh, and then I mean, Liam Neeson was awesome as Raz Raz Al Ghul. I thought he, I mean, Liam Neeson's, you know, I think he's. They did a good bait and switch on that because uh, uh, after the Last Samurai, Ken Watanabe is that how you say his oh, name? Oh yeah he was like a big deal then and people were trying to get him to be in the movie. So when they said, and Ken Watanabe is a uh, uh, Ra's al Ghul, you know, you're like, Oh, that's going to be interesting. And then you kind of realize like something's wrong here, mm -hmm. you know, piecing it together. This doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, uh, like going back to what we talked to us, talked about last week with the whole Negan thing. They kind of did that bait and switch. Oh, we're Negan. I'm Negan. Yeah. And then at the end you find out who the real Negan yeah, is. Who the real Negan is. Yeah. Very, yeah. No, what are they? The League of Shadows or whatever the mm -hmm. Batman. So, um, all of that I thought was, and and that movie really touched into like Batman going to train with ninjas. So it explains mm -hmm. why he has so many like ninja skills and fighting skills and stuff. And you know, you and see being in the darkness and you know, um, you know, using like the smoke bombs, all that stuff to kind of like. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because in in Batman '89, when he throws the smoke bomb down and disappears, that's a very ninja move. You know, it's some mm -hmm. Shokasuki stuff. No, but yeah, like, uh, yeah, I, I was definitely, I saw that one in the theater because a buddy of mine was like, oh, a new Batman. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I liked it. I thought it was good, but I wasn't like, you know, oh, I got to go out and buy it when it comes out. I was just like, eh, it's cool. It's there. You know, it's better than mm -hmm. the last two, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, and then when Dark Knight came out, I was just like, Psh, man, forget about it. And then I was worried about that too, you know, like everybody else, like, oh, Heath Ledger is a Joker. But I was just like, okay, man, I'm on, I'm, I'm on the bandwagon now. I'm, I'm all on board for this. Um, the Dark Knight Rises is one of my examples of uh, like how movies are set up to fail. Like uh, Batman Begins and The Dark Knight were so good that I knew when part three came out, all there was to do was to wrap up the story. It's like the same as Return of the Jedi. Nothing can follow Empire Strikes Back. You can't outdo it. And yeah. that's how Dark Knight was. It's like, you're never going to make a better movie than the Dark Knight. All he can do is wrap up the story. So when uh, Dark Knight Rises came out and people killed it, and they're like, oh, it sucks. It's not as good. I was like, you kind of got to take it as its own thing. And then later on, people grew to love it the way I did, like the whole stuff with Bane. And I was, you were merely adopted by the dark. I was born in it, raised in it. Like all that's just, and then when he breaks his back, like yeah, that scene. Man. Just, oof. I, was, I was getting flashes of the like, comic book. Yeah, you know? exactly. And that that iconic cover when he you know broke Batman's bag, and it's just like, yeah, 
up, man. Even the whole beginning at the at the beginning when he's like talking to the the FBI guy or, or the CIA guy and he's telling him like you know um, what do you tell him? Uh, nobody cared who I was until I put on the mask. And, yeah, no one cared who I was till I put the mask on. Uh, yeah. See, man, like I, I don't understand why people don't like that movie. Like I loved uh, it. I saw it in the they, IMAX, and I just I yeah, loved it I when I first saw it. I yeah, said, man, this is good. You just know? the whole thing where like Bane figures out where Batman's uh, lair is, where the extra stuff is, and then he mm -hmm. blows the hole, and you see like the tumbler drop down, and ah, your arsenal, gratefully accepted. Like yeah, all that mm -hmm. stuff is amazing. And he just like he was just so. Oh man! Even when he killed what's his name, Mads Mick, uh, what's it? Not Mads Mickelson. Mads Mickelson was that? No, uh, the other guy, the guy from um, Rogue One. It's not Mads Mickelson. Is the other guy? Uh, I can't remember his name right now. He was also in like some of the, the guy where he like you know that rich guy that was trying to like get Wayne's stuff. Yeah, yeah, the high cheekbones guy. What the hell is yeah. his name? I'm talking about yeah. It's like you're pure evil. I'm necessary evil. And then he mm -hmm. just like just sort of rips his head up. And I was like, man. And they did the same kind of bait and switch too with uh uh Talia al Ghul or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they it's like of course they had to have uh Marianne Cotillard or whatever in it because she was like the it girl at the moment. She'd been in like 10 movies in a row. So when she turns up, you're like, Yeah, that's about what they do. And then when she turned out to be an important character, you're like, Oh, hey, all right. Yeah, uh, uh. It's a movie studio that does mockbusters. Yeah, he's explained special effects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Ledger was a uh, lethal joker, though. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, yeah, he's a good joker, man. Uh, this I knew I knew about Robin Williams. I didn't know about William Defoe or Curry. I know Robin Williams really wanted to be Joker for the longest time. I think uh didn't Robin Williams also weren't those was there talk of having him be the Riddler uh after after Nicholson was Joker I think they wanted Robin Williams to be the Riddler um hmm. but then they went a different direction for part 2 with uh, Penguin and Catwoman you know I still uh, returns is still my favorite man I still love yeah. that one uh I still love the 89 one I mean yeah it's it's still you know it's still going to be those two those first two are just like man so good just the dark the dark tone of it i wish they would have brought harvey dent back billy d in the second one but uh jeff says willem dafoe would have been a damn near perfect joker and i agree he's got kind of that gappy tooth smile and that big laugh and like like i feel like his green goblin was almost jokerish you know? yeah yeah the way he would like laugh and just be over the top you know when he was the green goblin i watched yeah. uh uh, I watched that Spider-Man, the one with Willem Dafoe, and then uh, Boondock Saints uh, in the same, like, back-to-back -back as a double feature. And I was like, Willem Dafoe is the greatest actor alive! Like, this guy's amazing! The whole scene where he's acting against himself in a mirror in that Spider-Man mm -hmm. movie, where he's, mm -hmm. you know, Harry Osborn or whatever, but then he turns to the, the mirror and he's the goblin and they're arguing with themselves. I was like, this is like um, just outstanding film work. He'll never get nominated because it's a superhero movie, but he killed it. Yeah, yeah. Back, I was just back to OJ again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Green Goblin. Yeah, yeah. He did do a really good uh, Green Goblin. Small and incredible role, uh, some of his massacre with Jason Robar. Yeah, I think we I think we talked about this last week, right? Yeah, where Robards was uh, 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 Al Capone, because that mm -hmm. intrigued me. Like, he doesn't feel like Al Capone. I'd like to see that one. Yeah, I might have to check that one out. Cause that's pretty interesting. I've only like I, like we talked last time. Jason Robard, I always picture him as somebody's dad. Yeah, I mean, kind of uh, not too. Yeah, American Psycho. Yeah, he was good in American Psycho also. Yep. Uh, I got to go return some videotapes. Did, did you ever see The Lighthouse? I that did. Other movie? Whoa, that there's one yeah. that I had no expectation for. And as I was watching it, it turned into something I was not. I mean, anytime if you told me I was going to see Mermaid Vagina, you know, I, I would have rushed right out and seen it. But no, the movie just throws weird stuff at you, you know. Yeah, it was just weird by the end where they're like kind of getting, becoming, 
they're Barnacle. losing their mind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like, I, I was like, what am I watching? Mm -hmm. You know, but it's 824, man. So it's kind of like, it's all right, right? Yeah. Well, the whole thing was black and white and it was shot mm -hmm. in four by three, which was weird as hell. Like, yeah, just, it wasn't in widescreen. It was shot in square format, four by three, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so just the movie itself just took daring chances. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I mean, I still, the, I still, the look of it, I like the look of it. I just, like yeah. you said, it just, it's just really, really way out there. Uh, very no wrong film. Dark Knight Rises was final story. Yeah, I still think I still think it didn't deserve the hate that it got. Me. I think I still no. loved it. I thought there was uh, a lot of stuff in there that was that was worthwhile for sure. Well, it's like the whole like that. I think that's kind of like why I really love Rocky Three because you see Rocky lose, you see Batman lose, and he has mm -hmm. to come back. And I like that whole aspect of it. That that. I guess yeah. that, that part where having to come back and, you know, rebuild yourself, especially like, you know, um, Batman. I mean, Batman was like broken, you know, it's just like, mm -hmm. whereas Rocky, he was broken emotionally, you know, and uh, just the fact of losing, you know, Mickey and stuff like that. It's just, yeah. I mean, I think that those, that's why those are some of my favorite ones. The stuff in Dark Knight Rises where he like goes to the doctor and they're like, you have no cartilage in your knee. I don't even understand how you can walk. And it it ties it together because Batman isn't a superhero. He has no powers. He's just a dude. So he would eventually be like, yeah, man, you got spina bifida or whatever, man. Your back's all busted up. And, you know, like, yeah, yeah I don't know. No, I think that's, um, yeah, even like in Dark Knight right, or uh, the Dark Knight, you see him take off a shirt and you see all the bruises on all the, you know, the scars and everything. I like yeah. that aspect that you actually see, Hey, under that, like he's hiding all this stuff, you know? Yeah. He, uh, it I, takes its toll on him. He's not made mm -hmm. of steel. Yeah. Had conflict with Joe Schumacher is why he didn't take the role. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know that part that he was going to do Riddler. I never knew that part of it. Yeah, at that point, Jim Carrey was a bigger star because I don't think uh, a Goodwill Hunting had come out yet, mm -hmm. and Goodwill Hunting really revived Robin Williams' career. He had, he had a bit of a lull after uh, uh, Dead Poet Society. You know, he uh, Mrs. Doubt, Doubtfire or whatever was probably his biggest role in between. But you know, mm -hmm. those aren't exactly you don't go from Mrs. Doubtfire to the Riddler. You know, yeah, no, I absolutely agree, Defoe. Yeah, all right, Monroe, take it easy, brother. Have a good night. Thank Thanks for coming by. I always appreciate and, uh, you, buddy. Again, man. Thanks again. Take care, brother. One time I uh, I checked my uh, Night Owl Movie Talk Instagram page, and uh, Juan had sent me a really cool Misfits cover. I was like, Juan, Juan, oh, Juan's nice. a fan. That's my man. Yeah, exactly. So, and personally, uh, Sam Ray's better man, even the third one. I, I don't like the third one. <laughs> I, I wasn't that big of a fan of the third one, but I liked, uh, I mean, I liked what Venom or whatever. So it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, I just didn't like, uh, I just didn't like, what's his name? Topher Grace as Venom, you know? Yeah. But if you have to think, if you have Toby Maguire, who's someone who's like him, but kind of bizarro Toby Maguire. And it's like, ah, oh, Topher Grace. That makes sense. Like it's, it's decent casting. Yeah. But no, oh, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, I never thought about that. Maybe. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we're almost uh, we're at, we're almost at the two hour mark, man. So I guess we'll yeah. leave it off here. You know, uh, do you got anything coming up on your channel? Um, well, I've uh, I have a few people I need to talk to. I want to get back on my Tarantino uh, watch alongs. The streaming is brutal, like. True Romance isn't on anything I have. So I wanted to watch that next before I got too far into his oeuvre. You know, I wanted to kind of mm. get some of the earlier ones. So uh, uh, True Romance was a pain to find. And um, uh, um, uh, Jackie Brown, I wanted to talk to Jeff about being with. Uh, I believe that's now on Tubi. It wasn't the first time I checked, and now it is. It used to be on Max. So just keeping track of these movies on streaming. I can't stress enough if people out there, physical media, do not give away your physical media. Don't get rid of it. It's important to have Jamie Hart. Yeah. All right, there's a two. <laughs>
<laughs> um, but yeah, I'm working on the, uh, the, the Tarantino stuff. And I also have a few other things. I, one of these days I got to watch Batman 89 because it's part of my comfort food series. But at the same time, I feel like that should be connected with all the other Batman films. So, uh, yeah, I should be getting back on the uh, streaming pony here. Otherwise, next Friday, I will be hosting In the House on my channel with my main homeboy, the horror cat dad. So definitely uh, come back next week for sure and check out Don over on his channel. Episode 11. Episode Can 11. It, man? Congratulations. We made it 10 episodes. Happy anniversary, buddy. This is, uh, that's what, the, the uh, juice wedding or juice anniversary is 10, I think. <laughs> OJ <laughs> that's five is paper 10 is juice I think I don't know <laughs> 15 is Cosby yeah hope hope um, <laughs> <laughs> I take I take that back I'm sorry anyone hope, up there hope, I, like... I, I didn't mean that All right. wow <laughs> <laughs> just got real dark real quick man <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it did it's oh, not just go, dark, for Jack, it's dark for all of us. Um, <laughs> no, let's say the word for Jackie Brown. Thank you, Jeff. I we had talked about that last week, and I had, when I started looking around for it, I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's on Mac still. And then when it wasn't there, I had to do the internet search of run through all my tabs and figure out where the hell it lives these days. So, but uh, yeah, I'd like to do that with Jeff. Oh, and also yes. our buddy Chris Russ later tonight, uh, the Watch Along of the Warriors on Cinephile Sanity's channel. Yes, sir. Go ahead and uh, y'all go over there after here. Take a commercial break and go yeah. to Sean's and uh, check out that. Yeah. And I uh, wish Texas Russell a happy birthday. Yeah, he's a really, really cool guy and stuff like that. So, and they're doing the yeah. Warriors. So, you can't go wrong. Yeah, there. that's a triple whammy. We like Sean. We like Texas Russell. We like the Warriors. Hell, I like Juno. I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Me and Larry are never going to make a getaway. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's why I have all, yep. Physical media, I want to be available whenever I want to watch it. Jamie yes. knows. Mm -hmm. Jamie's, uh, Jamie's got a good head on her shoulders. It's too bad um, someone doesn't anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, God damn it, Larry. Not you, too. This is like when evil lurks. I turn my head and everybody's got OJ jokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Jeff. Thanks so much, man. Um, as for me, um, I, as I mentioned before, my video that was supposed to release today, it got uh, had some audio issues, so I'm getting it fixed, and it'll be out. More well, likely, it's going to be out tomorrow. And, well, the only, uh, only the true fans are watching at this point. What's it going to be? Let us give us a spoiler. <laughs> Uh, well, you can't really see it in frame. I actually, I still have it out displayed, but it's a, a Jada figure. One I haven't done yet. You won't be able to see it. I don't think, I think it's way off camera. So, uh, it's a Jada figure. So those Jada toys, you've been finding some awesome ones lately. Those mon universal monster ones. And, uh, yeah, I, yeah I've been digging them. Yeah. It's a, uh, well, it's, it's, I mean, I did Frankenstein, so it's Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, okay. How appropriate so, for the Joker and Harley Quinn. You got the Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. Nice. Plus, I mean, uh, Dan, he, he had mentioned uh, in one of his streams that he wanted to do a video or a stream, him and I, of doing uh, our favorite Jada figures from the line. Yeah. Like, what's our favorite? Discuss what our, you know, what would we want to see future lines, stuff like that. So I figured, let me get it. Let me get that review out there. So this way it's like, okay. I have this here and now I can say this X, Y, and Z. So like I've, I've reviewed all of them that I have anyway. You know what I mean? That's a great collab. You and Mr. Dan will be good together. You guys got good energy, both of you. So we'll see. Uh, that's down the pipeline where we still have to figure that out. But beyond that, just a video tomorrow of that, the review for that. And then um, I got like another couple of few things coming down the pipeline uh, next week. And then especially for episode 11. Next Friday on your channel. Oh, <laughs> All right. I'll do 10 and then you do 11. All right, there we go. Now teamwork. <laughs> That's what I like. But thank you, everybody, um, for coming by. And uh, it looks like 
I'm going to sleep. You and Oscar are going to sleep in 30 minutes. So, okay. Any final thoughts? Don? Um, no, I have no thoughts. I have an empty mind. Uh, it's almost like someone cut my head off. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to uh, Eric's son. It's his 14th birthday tomorrow. So, uh, oh, so there's so, three birthdays this week. Yeah, it's a wow. big birthday weekend. What, what was and nine see, months ago? Uh, nine months ago. Uh, was, uh, I'm not going to do the backwards math on that. Whatever was going on nine months ago, uh, Christmas, I don't know, uh, uh, 4th of July? Is that when that birthday? I don't know. I'm not trying to figure out when all these people were conceived. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Recipe calls for eggs. Some O. <laughs> mm -hmm. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> uh, oh, man. So, yeah. So, Brody turned 13 yesterday. Russell, Texas Russell, I don't know. What, I don't know his age. I'm not going to ask. I, I heard it's against the rules to ask somebody their age. Uh, or is that just for women? I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So, happy birthday to your son also. Um yeah, and again, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by and take it easy, Jeff. Uh, we had Sean, Russell, uh, Kara, our HR rep, Jay Harang, our legal counsel, mm -hmm. Roy, thanks for stopping by. Uh, Eric, man, again, happy birthday to your to your son, and um, hope hope y'all have a great birthday. Um, Patrick, Kal El Daily, Kal El uh, Daily, yeah, full crowd. So uh, yeah, so I, thank I, you everybody for coming and hanging out with us every week for the last ten weeks. Yeah, can't believe it's flown two and a half months has flown by that fast. Yeah, it's it's nuts, right, man? Look, it's just like you know, it's good times, man. And thank you so much for going on this adventure with me, Don. Man, I I don't think I'd be able to do this without you <laughs> hanging out with me, brother. Hold my hand, Larry. Hold my hand. <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> little prison love. Uh -huh. You need uh, human well, contact. Touch it. <laughs> you need human contact. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's now a teenager. He's the uh, the same age as my stepdaughter. So nice. It's crazy. It's crazy to think about, man. But again, guys, thank you all so much. Y'all have a nice evening, and we'll leave it at nice. Yeah. Green grass have a good night, everybody. forever to all of you. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Take care.